And so that is why this education ecosystem, us creating this infrastructure is so important. No longer should there be these silos in education that are really hard to navigate if you're a student or adult learner. We're trying, we're working toward making it seamless and maybe one front door one day for all New Jersey residents to enter to find out about all the education and training in the state and decide which educational pathway will lead to the career pathway that they are most interested in and in which they will thrive. And so thank you all for participating with us on this journey. Um, and we just finished year one, we are about to embark on year two. Uh, and we wanted to take today to show you highlights of the work that has been done in the Center of Workforce Innovation for Renewable Energy. We have some presidents to acknowledge. Um, the community colleges participating in the Center of Workforce Innovation for Renewable Energy are Atlantic Cape Community College, Middlesex College, Bergen Community College, and Rowan College of South Jersey. And so we personally thank Dr. Barbara Gaba, Dr. Mark McCormick, Dr. Eric Friedman, and Dr. Fred Frederick Keating for allowing their staff and faculty to engage in this work um, we know that they're kind of doing this work in their spare time or on the side from their regular jobs. And so we appreciate the cooperation and the willingness of these presidents uh, to ensure that their staff and faculty participate. So thank you to them. This initiative would not be possible without our partnership with the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. We felt it very important that this initiative be informed by the voice of business, of industry. And in fact, BIA came to us wanting the exact same thing. So it was synergy all around. And we're so happy and pleased to be in partnership with the state's largest um, mem employer member association, maybe the country's largest employer member association. And we, I want to kick it off to uh, Chris Emmeholtz to give some remarks now. Chris? Thank you, Catherine. And thank you very much to all of you um, for your important work and, and for your partnership. And Catherine said it well, the partnership truly is that. It's uh, mutually beneficial um, uh, we get just as much out of the work with the community colleges as I hope the county colleges are getting from working with us. And it's important to have these public-private partnerships of these great institutions of higher learning and training and education and development, working with private sector, public sector, nonprofit sector employers um, that are working with BIA to make sure that they are responsive to the needs of the economy. And that's where I think the community colleges are, are leading, but it's all of the partners of the community colleges. It's the four-year schools, the um, tri pri private career schools, private trade unions, uh, K-12, to Votex, you name it. Um, they're all responding to what their students and what the economy needs, and that's fantastic. And we're proud to partner with that. We're also proud to partner because this is resulting in, in great work. Um, these centers and, and having had a chance to sit through and listen to um, the results of year one and, and all these centers so far, they're fantastic. Um, it's impressive. And, and I think anybody's going to sit there and say, wow, students have so many more opportunities to get into careers that they probably didn't even know existed. And community colleges and all these different providers um, weren't necessarily as attuned to years ago. And now they're leading the way to make sure our students prepared for them. So um, it's great. And I'm especially proud because we need this work. Um, BIA needs this work because we know workforce development and we put ourselves out there as workforce development is a fantastic investment and partnering with you guys is a no brainer for us. We need this work because the economy needs it. Um, our economy is, is great in a lot of ways in New Jersey, but we're struggling in some ways as well. And workforce development is one of the ways to strengthen an already existing strength and make it stronger so that we're attracting more companies, growing more jobs, increasing wages and benefits for everybody. We need this because um, your students need it. Uh, all the students that you work with, 
all the students, whether it's um, in high school, whether it's somebody looking for a career change, whether it's college students, um, somebody that just joined your union, um, those students are going to benefit from everything that we're doing in this, this partnership. Um, we also need it, and, and this is interesting for this center um, and the great work that you're doing, the environment needs it. The environment's going to benefit from it. Um, BIA is a big believer in investing in green energy, the clean economy, um, looking at alternative ways that we can power our economy. And, and that needs a workforce. That needs a workforce with new skills that didn't exist in the past. And so thank you for helping create that workforce. And, and I know that that need is only going to grow and the importance of what you're doing is only going to grow. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for being a partner. Um, thank you for all that your partnership is giving to BIA and the economy and our, our member businesses. And we appreciate working with you and look forward to continuing that. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, Catherine. Chris, we really do appreciate your support and, and clearly that of NGBIA. So as, as Chris alluded to the pathways of the Center of Workforce Innovation for Renewable Energy are ones that we hear about a lot in New Jersey and really all over the country. So these new emerging industries especially require a very intentional focus on workforce development, education, and training that's required to really support that economic growth and that green economy that comes with them. So having that intentional focus really requires a strong connection to industry. So we want to thank our industry partners, including our industry leadership team, representing um, the infrastructure and energy sector employers, labor unions, and of course, our partnership with NJBIA. So today I'm really thrilled to be here and share the accomplishments of the Center of Workforce Innovation for Renewable Energy. And I really want to give a lot of appreciation and thanks to all of our education partners. As Catherine mentioned, you know, led by our community colleges, Atlantic Cape Community College, Bergen Community College, Middlesex College, and Rowan College of South Jersey, along with our high school partners, Cape May County Technical High School and Bergen County Technical High School, Middlesex Magnet Schools, and then our industry partner who has actually dual role as an as a education partner, the New Jersey Coalition of Automotive Retailers. And then we had some four-year partners as well, Thomas Edison State University and Rowan University. So we really are appreciative of, of the work that they did within that center. So I will stop talking now and say that I am extremely pleased to have with me Sherwood Taylor from Atlanta Cape, Joni Cafaro from Middlesex College, and Bridget Satchel from Rome College of South Jersey, who will overview the offshore wind pathway. Sherwood, you're on mute. Of course I'm on mute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, we thank the um, Council for this opportunity to be part of this pathway. The first um, item I want to talk to you about is our connection to high schools, a non-credit connection to high schools. Everyone on this call knows the importance of building the workforce, but also the future workforce. We need people now and we need people in the future. So our partners at Cape May Tech have developed a three awareness programs that can be utilized in sequence or however a school wants to use them. So the first one is called the Photon Game. So the Photon Game is designed to have the students examine the energy pathway for electricity generated by offshore wind and also compare that to how energy is generated through fossil fuel, coal, or through a power plant, through the traditional method. So that was the first pathway, um, the first um, game that they designed. The second one that's really critical, I'm a big believer in experience-based awareness, so preparing for a career in offshore wind. So this 10-day project really gives the students a unique experience about being employed in that industry, what it's like to work in the industry. In some cases, employees in the wind industry have to live offshore and work on really different and varied schedules. So this 10 day project allows them to explore that. And it also highlights, which is really critical, the importance of safety in this industry. It's very critical that this industry is very focused on safety. And the folks at KMA Tech have weaved that into this particular, um, this particular experience. And then the last experience that they have um, is called Beach Town USA. It's a town hall debate. I think this one is absolutely brilliant for the students. Um, 
This is the third project in the series. It's a mock town hall debate about a proposed offshore wind farm that's going to be developed in their community. What the students must do is they then must do research, examine evidence, and present arguments either in favor of or against this offshore wind development coming to their community. So, and they're doing these presentations to various stakeholder groups. So it really gives an instructor in a high school setting that wants to use these um, experiences a way to actually tie them in to their curriculum. It doesn't matter what curriculum it is. It could be science, it could be math, it could be English. They can tie these things in. So these three programs that we have done to connect with high schools, um, the Photon Game, Preparing a Career in the Offshore Wind Industry, and Beachtown USA, once they're actually available, will be um, very beneficial to our, to our schools. Thank you, Sherwood. Good morning. Um, again, I am Joni Cofaro, and um, as Sherwood said, this one of our deliverables was connection to high school. Middlesex College, in conjunction with Middlesex Magnet Schools, have, have created a Principles of Renewable Energy course. This is a three credit general education course that fulfills a science requirement. This course provides students with an introduction to renewable energy with a lab component and topics include energy conversion, conservation, and the regulatory aspects of alternative energy resources. This course uh, was developed for in-person instruction with the possibility to expand to online delivery. We are currently working with magnet schools on the logistics of offering this course at our campus for high school students, but we are piloting this course this spring for our high school st students, which I will discuss later in the presentation. Next slide, please. Middlesex College has created a three hour exploration in wind energy careers workshop which will be marketed in our department bulletin as well as all of our recruitment events. This workshop focuses on improving energy efficiency and reducing emissions while exploring different career options in the wind industry. Topics include renewable energy, wind energy, career exploration, and assessing career opportunities. There will be guest speakers from industry that will participate in this workshop. This course is built in, campus, in Canvas, and upon successful completion, participants will receive a digital badge through Credly. The goal of this workshop is to get a younger population to begin to understand different career opportunities throughout this industry. We plan to market this with our school uh, recruitment events, as well as adults looking for career change opportunities with our local one stop. I will now turn it back over to Sherwood. Thanks, Joni. Um, prior learning assessment, as we know, is something we talk about a lot. Um, Atlantic Cape was fortunate enough to win an award um, through New Jersey EDA to provide the first um, GWO basic safety training program with sea survival here in the, the state. That program is gonna take about 40 hours. The participants will be exposed to fire awareness, first aid, working at heights, manual handling, and obviously um, sea survivor, all focused on foundational safety skills that the employers will then build upon. So what we have done is we've had one of our professors take this curriculum from the GWO basic safety training organization, from GWO organization and review it for um, credit worthiness. So currently we have assigned three credits to that particular um, experience, which takes about a, a week. It's a 40 hour program that takes about a week. Um, so we have assigned three credits for that here at Atlantic Cape. That would go into our Associate Applied Science degree, which we call, it's our technical studies degree, which is where the majority of our prior learning assessment um, credits uh, go to. So we're really excited that we will be able to um, offer that to participants. We will also be issuing a badge uh, for that, so that they can show digitally that they've made that um, that they've made that achievement.
Bridget. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bridget Satchel. I'm the Dean of Career and Technical Education at Rowan College of South Jersey. In 2021, Rowan College of South Jersey was awarded the Wind Turbine Technician Challenge Grant through the New Jersey NJEDA. Through that grant, Rowan College had three primary goals. One was to develop an academic certificate program, degree program, as well as become a global wind organization training provider for basic technical training. As we developed, as we were going through the process of developing these academic certificate program, academic certificate program, and preparing for our degree program, we realized that there is a need to provide an apprenticeship opportunity as well as a pre-apprenticeship opportunity. The USDOL already had the competencies established for a registered apprenticeship in offshore wind and onshore wind. Um, RCSJ developed the related technical instruction training with one of our employer partners so that individuals would be prepared to be a, a participate in an apprenticeship opportunity to become a wind turbine technician. As you can see here, the, um, it's a competency-based uh, apprenticeship program, 2,000 hours. Our RTI is approximately 650 hours, which seems like a lot, but it, however it is, because it requires a lot of foundation and safety training, um, introduction to the wind, electrical theory. Um, so it is important for us to make sure we accurately prepare individuals with opportunities to earn and learn while they're in, in this industry. Can, uh, can you go to the next slide? As one of the great things about this, um, and as far as the Council of Community Colleges, we're all looking for opportunities to create um, stackable credentials and career pathways for individuals. So we have evaluated the apprenticeship program to be, it will receive 15 academic credits at RCSJ towards our Associate in Applied Science Wind Turbine Technician Associate Academic Certificate, which then would stack into our degree program. We are working in partnership with Rowan University so that we can make sure that our certificate and degree programs actually transfer over to one of Rowan University's bachelor's degree program. Next slide, please. And as we were going through the process of developing the apprenticeship program and our academic uh, certificate programs, we realized there is a strong need to make sure that individuals are prepared for entrance into this field. We developed a pre-apprenticeship program, which is 185 hours. This program, we hope to pilot this in the second year, actually. You're gonna provide individuals with the basic awareness of careers in wind energy, um, introduction to power, wind energy, of course, the safety, as well as including the foundational skills that they need in the workplace. In addition, the students would have an opportunity to participate in the Global Wind Organization Basic Technical Training Program. That program provides individuals with the basic skills in mechanical, electrical, and hydraulics that would be used for individuals working on wind turbines and working with the generator of the wind turbine. This is an excellent opportunity to prepare, prepare students for either entrance into a wind turbine technician training program or pre-apprenticeship program. As a part of this experiential learning, we also felt like there will be a need for them to have that hands-on component. And as a result of RCSJ receiving the funding through NJEDA, we will have the, we have the facilities and the equipment that the individuals would get hands-on experience with utilizing and developing their mechanical, electrical, and hydraulic skills. In addition, um, we incorporated a day in the life of a wind turbine tech where we will be utilizing 
virtual reality um, resources. So students will have an opportunity to actually see what it's like out being on a turbine before they actually get out there. So, you know, we're really excited about the opportunity to provide New Jersey residents with the basic skills that they will need to prepare for when to become a wind turbine technician, as well as continue on their career pathway in post-secondary education with stackable credentials. Thank you, Bridget. So the in the wind energy area, we did some professional development. So there are three specific things, um, areas that we focused on for professional development. Previously, I mentioned the um, experiences that were developed by Cape May Technical School. They did the photon game, the preparing for your career in the offshore wind industry and um, Beachtown, USA. In addition to those experiences that the students will go through, they have developed uh, professional development for instructors, train the trainer, if you, if you will. So those train the trainer programs will provide some detailed pedagogy for those instructors on how to deliver those particular experiences. They're gonna give them additional information on each section. So they'll have section guides, they'll have what's known as Remy first summaries and information, um, and they'll have some overview videos um, to actually help them step in and teach those particular um, experiences. Um, the principles of renewable energy done by our, our colleagues at Middlesex is part of their dual enrollment program. So they're going to be offering um, a manual lab protocols. They're going to be offering PowerPoints. Their information will also be in an open resource, an OER. So that will also help um, the instructors really get a jump start on teaching that program that have that, they have the um, knowledge for it but these additional supplies and resources developed uh, by Middlesex under professional development will help them move forward um, in a timely manner. And then here at Atlanta Cape, we um, updated a, a program that we had done previously under another grant um, to match. Obviously, in addition to the specific training for a particular program, overall training for instructors, so strategies for teaching adult learners, and this is for the adult population, um, that program has been updated. It's designed, it can be done 100% uh, online, or it can be brought in as a face-to-face -face module, and it can also be taught as a hybrid, partially online and partially face-to-face. Uh, -face. So in this design, um, participants will spend about five to eight hours a week on their modules. They'll go through some, um, areas like what makes a successful trainer, understanding learning styles, because we know our adults have different learning styles, um, adult theory, some concepts, one and two for adult theory, basic effective communications when you're an instructor, um, designing effective training programs, some pointers on what things make an effective training program, and then some just general presentation strategies and, and techniques to help keep the um, the adult audiences engage in the topics that they are referring to. And as I mentioned before, our, the principles of renewable energy, this is a general education three credit course that fulfills a science requirement. It's SCI 116. We are currently piloting this course this spring semester with 16 students. The faculty member is evaluating and updating coursework, lectures, and labs as the course completes this spring. Um, the curriculum materials will be ready to distribute after this course throughout the Pathways Initiative. This course meets Tuesdays for labs and Thursdays for lecture, and the faculty member is currently looking for a small wind turbine to enhance student learning. Uh, I will turn it over to PJ to talk about Pathway 2. Thank you so much, Sherwood, Joni, and Bridget, for that overview. Um, don't go away, because we're going to bring you back in just a little bit to answer some questions. Um, but we are going to move on to our next pathway. Um, 
And this again, this is another one that we're hearing a lot about electric vehicles. So I want to welcome Chinzia Diorio from Bergen Community College. She's going to talk to us about the electric vehicle pathway and the electric vehicle automotive technicians. Good morning, Chinzia. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you. And PJ Ricotta, who worked with me on this program, is in doing what he loves best right now. He's teaching students, so he is unable, unfortunately, to be here with us, but he gives everyone his best regards, and I will do my best to help his work shine that we did together. Um, had I known in fall of 2020 when I purchased an EV vehicle that I'd be working on this pathway, I would have been even more excited pulling that car out of um, the parking lot. This is an exciting area. It's an area where we're really being commissioned by the state to you know, really have more EV vehicles on the road in New Jersey. An interesting statistic is um, as of 1221, we only have 64,307 EVs registered in our state. And the New Jersey Energy Master Plan goal is to register 330,000 electric vehicles by 2025. Um, that's a big number. So here we are trying to meet the needs. You know, when you put the vehicles out there, you also need to have service people. You need to have people that can work on the cars and know how to create the cars. And that's part of the initiative here is to build the awareness of all EV design, engineering, not just the service technician, but all of that all together and get the younger generation um, fun hands-on experiences to get in interested in this EV workforce initiatives that we're here trying to create. So let me walk you through how we um, worked with our connection to high school first, the non-credit programs. And here you'll see a very detailed explanation of the electric vehicle Rover Lab and the electric vehicle go-kart design challenge. With the EV Rover, what we've created is a three-week high school laboratory was designed by Mr. Steve Cohen of Applied Technical High School. And just so everyone knows, they have a building here on the Bergen Community College campus. And this is to expose students to EV technology. Um, the Experiential Learning Awareness Project was developed to give students in a ninth or 10th grade physical sciences course the chance to learn how an electric vehicle operates by building and testing a scale model that uses the same principles of operation. The experience will be piloted at the Applied Technical High School here at Bergen Community College and our other partner, Bergen County Technical Schools in Teterboro in phase two of this project. And BCTS is our technical school trade school. So they're working uh, very well with us as we work on this project together. And then on the right side, you'll see the go-kart design challenge. And that curriculum is a semester long EV go-kart design challenge. And it was created by PJ Ricotta, Dr. PJ Ricotta and Mark Balzaret, and along with four STEM C2 research students. The course is intended for community college and Votech high school students in a mechatronics metal shaft and or welding course to design, build, and test an electric go-kart from scratch. It's a completely hands-on experience and anyone who takes part in it um, as we were building it, developing it, it's just developed so much excitement for this uh, field. And the course will be pilot, piloted at BCC and ATHS and BCTS Teterboro in phase two of this project. Next slide, please. And we all know in New Jersey and across the country, it's all about apprenticeships. Um, we are successfully working on two, and we'd also like to bring this into the apprenticeship field. Um, so what we've worked on with this you know, EV apprenticeship program is an addendum to the current US DOL certified apprenticeship in automotive technology uh, was created in partnership with NJ Car, which is NJ Coalition of Automotive retailers. And I just have to give a big shout out to them because they were such a partner in this program. We need we learned so much from our partner there. And I'm very grateful for them to share information with us and collaborate with us. So what we did together with them is updated the learning objectives to include 1500 hours of on the job training specifically to EVs and 75 hours of related technical instruction. The goal here is for people to apprentice anywhere from a manufacturer to a mom and pop automotive shop. Slide 12, next slide, please. 
So another thing that we are really working on with this initiative, NJ Pathways, is building non-credit um, automotive courses and eventually building that into um, having them worth credit if they're interested in receiving their associate's degree. So what we did here in continuing education is we built a 75-hour course in EV service technology to serve as either a standalone course in EV technology or as the related technical instruction for the above mentioned apprenticeship. This universal, which is non-manufacturer specific because a lot of manufacturers do have training in this area, is designed to be a first course in EV, which will be followed up by manufacturer specific instruction once the student committed to one brand or another. This course will be piloted at RVCC this summer. Um, Roseanne Krasafi, one of uh, people on my staff here at Bergen, uh, really helped me lead this effort. So I thank her as well. Next slide. Okay, as I mentioned, prior learning assessment, very, very important. The PLA for the EV service course and the apprenticeship uh, will resume after the summer's pilot course is completed. What we'll want to do is look, and look very carefully with Thomas State Edison State University and evaluate the RTI to uh, be able to give some PLA process credits for somebody who is interested in Associate of Applied Science and Technical Studies degree or Associate of Applied Science and Automotive Technology degree. We want to encourage people to continue their education because we know education changes lives. Next slide, please. Professional development. Train the trainer. We met with different vendors talking about what we can do to continually train and give people continued education because we know this field is ever evolving. Uh, professional development videos and best practices guides were embedded in each of the above mentioned deliverables in the apprenticeship RTI, in the non-credit automotive technology EV course, and even in those um, EV rovers and go-kart design, we, we put in embedded um, video so people can see experts doing things as they're learning to do it along the way. Next slide, please. So what we had going on um, to really learn about it, we had one of our professors, Professor Andrew Tomko at Bergen Community College with the help of a student research intern do a very comprehensive research report of EV service and infrastructure training needs in New Jersey. The report was based mostly on the findings from two industry roundtables of automotive dealers, manufacturers, industry professional organizations like National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence and Automotive Educators. As I said, New Jersey Cars was very helpful. We even had some manufacturers join in and talk to us about their needs, about what they're currently doing. And uh, it was nothing but helpful and a very, very thorough and robust uh, research study to help us uh, pave the way for the EV um, education at community colleges and technical schools in the state. Next slide, please. The EV apprenticeship pilot. Uh, the train the trainer professional development mini courses will start at RVCC, Raritan Valley Community College this July, this July using the start of the art, the state of the art, Lucas Newell. It's called the car train trainer. We viewed it um, here at Bergen and we had our partners come here and it is a perfect environment for somebody to learn without any, um, nobody can get hurt. It is, you know, if you're dealing with high voltage electric, you worry about people any injuries that might happen. And this trainer is just removes any of those dangers, but gives them such real um, experience and training that's really essential before you enter this field. And this will be followed by a pilot of the Automotive Techno Technology EV Specialty course at RVCC in August using the same trainer. And students who complete the course will then be eligible to start their apprenticeship in the fall. And I think what's really important here is to think about what uh, Governor Murphy said in February. He said New Jersey would get more ambitious, aiming for 100% clean energy by 2035. Initially, it was 2050. So here we are in this NJ Pathways trying to help him get to that goal. Um, I hope that uh, I explained clearly what we're doing 
with the EV vehicle pathway. If you have any questions, I look forward to hearing from them. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Great. Thank you so much, Shinzia, for sharing that overview. And now we're going to bring back Sherwood, Jody, and Bridget to answer some questions from the chat. Um, but while we are letting folks do that, please do put your questions in the chat. And it could be anything. So if you're interested in implementing any of the programs that you heard about today, let us know. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm going to go first to, to Joni and ask um, the pilot. So pleased that that is happening right now. Um, and I know that it's currently underway. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to get there to see one of the, the lab portions. But I'm just curious if you've gotten any, um, any reflections from the pilot, any feedback from the students, you know, the energy, no pun intended, um, of them <laughs> you know, learning this. This is so important to, you know, on that ending note of Chinzia and the, the, the state of New Jersey's goal for 100% um, clean energy, you know, that's, that's a big lift. So what is, what's, what, what, what feedback are you getting so far? So I'm going to ask Donna to reflect on that because this is a credit program. Thank you, Donna. Okay, we'll, we'll move on. Maybe Donna can. You can unmute. Can you unmute her, please? Yep. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the instructor is um, somebody who is very, very enthused about this course. He was so excited um, when he was asked to develop this course. And he's been keeping in touch throughout the semester and um, the students is, are engaged. He was a little concerned at the beginning that this is a gen ed course and students would just be doing it to fulfill a science requirement. But many, many of the students in the class are very, very engaged. And um, uh, Joni mentioned that uh, he's been working with facilities to um, put up a, a windmill on campus and the students are excited about that. So, so far, so good. And um, as, as Joni said, he's working on the curriculum as he goes along. So mm -hmm. he's learning the, the ins and outs and the kinks that need to be worked out. So certainly the next time that it gets taught, it'll be even better than it is this time. But Excellent. so far, so good. That's great. I love the fact though, that I think there's a lot of advantages to this course being available to anyone, right? As a, as a gen ed science, that's how you're going to spark interest, right? right. Like it's not like somebody's going to wake up and say, you know, I think I want to go into renewable energy. I mean, they may because we hear so much about it, but this really gives them that really up close personal kind of look to it that I think is, is amazing. So, so thank you. And I do have some ideas for that windmill. So we will follow up after this because um, I think that's a, be a, a, an awesome um, addition to that, to that program. Okay. Now Sherwood, I'm going to give you the the floor real quick to talk maybe a little bit more. I know you gave a great overview, so it's kind of hard for me to ask questions because all of you are so thorough, but I know that the strategies for teaching adult learners is, is a passion of yours. So um, that program is obviously extremely relevant. When we talk about the electrification of New Jersey, we talk about clean energy, we know that there's a lot of upskilling and reskilling that is needed, and that is obviously going to be um, our adult population. Um, but I think this program could be very beneficial across all of our industry sectors, right? So the floor is yours if you want to add anything to what you've already given a very comprehensive overview. Sure. So specifically, um, we designed, I don't want to go way too far back in the time machine, but we had something in New Jersey called the Talent Networks. Um, Bridget Satchel was um, in charge of one of the centers and worked with Atlantic Cape, and that's where the original program was designed. So we updated it, or I updated it, um, with the intent of not making it renewable energy specific for that purpose that you just mentioned, Stephanie. Any one of our centers can take this, it's foundational information about training adults, and then you add in the specifics, or you make the specific field, let's just say it's healthcare, then if you're going to do a hybrid, you do the program online, but then you have your participants come in maybe two or three times, but those hands-on, that face-to-face -face component actually focuses on the content, whether it's healthcare or any other construction, you can actually, um, you know, focus on it. 
Excellent, excellent. So we do have one um, kind of comment and question in the chat. So the connection to uh, from this is from Jackie Burke from the Council of uh, Vocational Technical Schools. The connection to education with the vocational technical schools is great. Is there any plan to try to expand to other county vocational technical schools? And I will let any one of you answer that. And if if you don't, but I'm any takers, I'll I'll field that myself. I'm happy to take it for the EV vehicle, but I think in general, that's our goal is to share all our curriculum across the whole state. Um, there's our, you know, a few community colleges working on each pathway with high schools and industry, but the goal here is to create this curriculum for the whole state to share and they will put it in a repository for the NJ pathways. And what we're doing now is we're pilot, piloting it specifically for the EV vehicle I can speak on. We're piloting it and then we're going to have our phase two. And then once it's all solidified and all the kinks are worked out, we'll finalize the curriculum and share it so that other technical high schools, community colleges can share it and learn from us. And then we're all here to help them along the way as they kick it off at their schools. I would just add that I think that's the biggest benefit of these pathways initiatives is that we are standardizing programs and curriculums across the state, which is really enhancing. I mean, I, I think if you look back over the years, different community colleges had different programs in, in different areas. And, and this really provides a statewide, credible, standardized program. And, you know, Joni, just to feed off of you, and I know Aaron and Catherine and Stephanie have heard me say this. It has brought us all together. It has brought us together as community colleges across the state to work as one unit with one goal, and that's to help and develop our workforce in the state of New Jersey. So I am. this has been a lot of work, yes, in our spare yes. time, but I think the goal is to bring us all together and have shared curriculum, and it's working. So it's definitely working. So thank you to all of you. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of your uh, input on that. So one more question from the from the chat. So is there a demand for skilled workforce at the bachelor's or higher level? If so, would any of this incredible VoTech work be able to be used towards degree programs in addition to the credit courses that we developed? Any takers on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's what we're doing here when we're talking we're talking with Thomas Edison University and we're getting PLA. This is for engineering students um, at all levels, STEM students. So these courses will be the building blocks to get them to the higher levels. Um, the goal is to transfer these um, non-credit and credit courses into an associate's degree and then get, get them to you know, the NJIT STEM program or the other technical universities across the state. So there is definitely workforce needs with um, bachelor's level, master's in the STEM field of renewable energy. So I definitely see this as a feeder to those programs as well. Agreed. And I'll just piggyback off that. I couldn't agree more, Chinzia. Um, and I'm even kind of looking at it from a higher level. So we're looking at these very specific pathways, um, like towards the end of wind energy, look, we're truly focusing on that wind turbine tech, but all of those amazing awareness programs, just of the industry, yep. Sherwood and I, a couple of weeks ago, attended the big offshore wind um, conference. It was amazing. There were 4,000 people there. And the, the depth of the offshore wind industry itself, it's not just about wind turbine technicians. You can get into the scientific of environmental studies. You can get into um, marine life. You can get into you know, the mechanics and the, the operations of the design of the windmills themselves. When you look at electric vehicles, I love the, the awareness programs, especially are opening the eyes. Like I said, we're not waking up and saying, I want to be X, Y, and Z. We're creating opportunities to expose young, that next generation workforce, high school students, and even adults to all of these options that are available. Electric vehicles, you may go into that um, go-kart experience and design to realize that you really want to get more into the design and engineering side of things while we're the main goal is you know to try to get them into the auto technician there's many more um, options available and so I think that's really the success of these two pathways in particular that they've encapsulated both very um, creative awareness programs that will get folks interested in taking the programs and opening their eyes to these industries and then getting into very specific ways that both young 
students in high schools and adults trying to upskill or reskill have opportunities to get into those fields. So I'm really appreciative of the work that was done um, within the center to be so intentional, as I said um, earlier. I don't see any other questions in the chat, so I'm going to turn it back over to Catherine. I really want to thank all of you, Sherwood, Joni, Bridget, Chinzia, all of you that worked in the center, Cape May County Tech, um, Middlesex Magnet Schools, and, um, you know, again, these awareness programs, I'm just so happy to be able to expose students to these career fields. So back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you to Sherwood, Cynthia. Joni, uh, Bridget, did I miss anyone? I don't, <laughs> we had a lot of special people working um, in this center and you can tell by, um, by the programs, the pathway connections, that's what, that's what our pathways team means when they say deliverables, uh, because each pathway connection to a different education sector, uh, or to industry, uh, we categorize them as our deliverables to get these pathways connected, but they are pathway connections so that anyone, like I said before, can move seamlessly through an education and training pathway toward a credential or a degree. So thank you to everyone and um, for the great work that you did. And we're looking forward to uh, maintaining that energy in year two, hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> we have here a QR code for you to give us feedback about this meeting um, and really an opportunity to provide your insights, your questions, your comments, what you would like to see in the future for the Pathways Initiative um, to us. And we look at that and we value your opinion. So open up your phones, use your camera to take a picture and um, go to those questions and provide us uh, your feedback and, and any other uh, uh, feedback you might have for us. Additionally, next slide, um, you can access this QR code and uh, see all of our future April collaborative meetings. Each one this month is focused on a center of workforce innovation. We did postpone our uh, collaborative meeting that was to take place at 10 o'clock this morning, focused on the Center of Workforce Innovation for Manufacturing and Supply, or I'm sorry, for Manufacturing, Production and Engineering. Uh, that will get rescheduled very shortly. Um, but we have four other ones coming up besides that one. When we add that one, that'll be the fifth one. Uh, we want to present to all of you, our community, all the work that our education uh, colleagues have engaged in. And lastly, follow us on social media. These are our handles. I, I'm usually, my hand is usually slapped because I always forget this part. Uh, but we have younger people on our staff who remind me of the importance of you being connected to us on social media so you could see what we're up to, all of our activities and events and engagement. So thank you again for participating in the Statewide Pathways Initiative. And thank you uh, for joining us today to hear about these amazing pathways created, connected, enhanced in the Center of Workforce Innovation for Renewable Energy. Thank you. Have a good afternoon or good morning.